up guys what's growing on so got some new buff gears i kind of like this one a little better feeling the logo um, but this week we're doing another ecological landscape transformation and i'm back in longwood probably about a mile and a half from that other longwood project we did on the pond um, with the epic paths all the way around the house and we've got a really cool design for this one too i'll definitely try to cut it into this uh this video for you guys for sure and Amanda actually did the entire design on this one so Amanda's definitely way more than a uh, assistant or helping with emails or secretarial type work she does just a little bit of everything so this job's actually kind of like on a, uh, a Florida mountain not your typical uh, site that you run into here in Florida we actually are up on a, a bit of a hill I shouldn't say mountain but um, as you can see the front yard has a lot of slope to it um, a lot of perennial peanut going in out here a couple of big olives all of the grass is coming out, all the lower petalum, all of that standard landscape. And uh, it's tight here. Barely getting the rigs out along the road, barely keeping the machinery up here on the property. So definitely challenging when you're working in a tight residential area when you bring trenchers and sod cutters and bobcats and multiple muck trucks. So that's something really exciting. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. All the azaleas are coming out, obviously the Bidens, um, lower petalum, the canna lilies here on the side. We do have a bougainvillea over here. You can see the homeowner's doing a little bit of composting and they have a little veggie garden started with a couple of things. Got some bananas and stuff here in the backyard. A little bit of that cranberry hibiscus, sweet almond. And all of this standard stuff is just coming out. Hey, get that ornamental crap out of here. Yes, sir. Flax lily, azalea, Laura Petalum. What? Abricola, Lugushrum. Yep, we don't need that. Dude, new electric muck truck reporting for duty, huh? Oh, you know it. Check Dude. it out. Uh, check it out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that articulation. Oh. Muck That's truck's great. doing big things here. Okay. Nice. Oh, that thing dumps too, man? What's going on? Ooh. All right, muck truck doing big things. Oh man, no tractor getting in the backyard here, huh? Definitely not. It's gonna be almost full, dude. All right, what's up, guys? What's growing on? So, day six on this Longwood project. And by day six, I mean four days last week, two days so far this week, and it is just hot and muggy out here. And this is a really small site. This is like a, you know two tenths of an acre, and I have to say, smaller sites are always more challenging. I could have cleared an acre in the time it took us to do this tenth of an acre, just because of the access with machinery, um, being on a little bit of a slope. Lots of technical difficulties here that just aren't always expected. You knew it was going to be a little tougher. You just don't realize how tough it's going to be. So the plants have showed up. We've got all the ground prep done. We've done all the demarcation. Miss Amanda's actually out here this morning laying out some plants and uh, I have to hit the road here in a bit, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick run around. Just got the drone up and we'll show you what's growing on. Oh, I see a Vitex, a papaya. We got a little bit of a seating area going there with a couple of palms and the idea is to have a hammock All right, so staging on this site is obviously um, Challenging to say the least we've got a driveway that's on an incline trees constantly falling over No place to really stockpile or store the mulch Compost is just staying in the truck and we just picked up six yards of that uh, mushroom compost Really good stuff. It's not something I commonly find available in the Tampa area smells alive you can tell this is some good stuff 
And compost is not topsoil. Compost is not dirt. Um, you know, compost is a material in its own and a lot of people get it confused and a lot of people sell things they say is compost that actually isn't, so. Uh oh, so you guys can see the layout here in the front yard. I don't know if the drone picked up those lines, but we have another seating area, hammock area, and then landscaping throughout the front of the yard. Let's see what's growing on out here in the backyard. The guys already started to get this Simpson stopper in. And this whole area, as soon as we walk through the gate, is like more of a kid's play area. It's got that come along. Another seating area. All right guys, so this place is a hot mess. Still a lot going on here, still a lot to be done, and I haven't been as present on this one as I normally have. I've got a lot of issues going on back at the farm, homestead, personal issues, and I guess you guys are gonna find out sooner or later, but um, just lost my mom. She passed here mid-July, so we're dealing with that. Unfortunately, she was up in Massachusetts staying with her sister. I can't even go up there to visit her because of the whole COVID thing. I have to quarantine for 14 days. I have to have a you know, negative tests. So it's a whole big mess to even say the least. I don't even want to get into it right now, but I've been a little bit on the edge here the last few weeks to, to say the least. So it's tough ping, picking up this camera. Um, it's tough really just operating it all at this time. I'm sure some of y'all watching this have been through this and it's not easy. I had a really special mom. She was uh, a lot in my life to say the least. She was like my rock. So it has been tough, so I don't have a lot of camera in me this week. I'm gonna put this thing down. When we get back here next week, I will, uh, I'll pick it up and give you guys a little bit of the run through. I will say that being out here on the job site is way, way better than being home and dwelling on things like this. I love working, I love being out in the field even without what happened with mom. It's mindless. I love being out here on the machine. I love being out here with the guys. I love being out here going through the motions. I hate being in the office, so I'd much rather be out here playing in the dirt and showing you guys what's growing on. So I need to get back to it. What's up guys, what's growing on? So another grass hole transformation. I'm back here for the follow-up on this newest longwood project we just completed. We're about mid-August 2020 here in Florida and the team isn't here anymore. The guys finished up last week. I'm on here on a Monday to do that final walkthrough, get you guys this quick video. And every afternoon we've been here, every morning almost, we've been getting some kind of crazy rains. You can guys kind of see what's moving in here typical Florida afternoons, afternoon showers, um, which is great for plant growth, but doesn't make uh, our job too much easier. So this project, this install actually took us about 11 days. So about three days actually longer than expected. And I could tell you that I could have probably done a one acre project in the time it took me to do this, maybe two tenths of an acre project, just because small scale projects are always a little bit more challenging. Getting the machinery in there is challenging. Being on a little bit of a Florida mountain here was challenging. Small access to the backyard was challenging. So you always run into multiple factors that are sometimes unexpected. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. So unfortunately, like I said, we went a couple of days overboard on the install. Um, took us a little longer than expected, but no big deal. We are done now. Um, out here in the front, we've got a um, you know lawn alternative front median combination of peanut and sunshine mimosa with a couple olives as you're entering the house. Um, you can see we brought in some cabbage palms here. A lot of the plants here 
didn't rain this weekend. Um, so even though we're still running the irrigation every day, a couple things look a little bit dry today. So as long as this rain continues, the homeowner does the watering, the irrigation's running. Um, we did retrofit the standard irrigation system here. So there was a typical rotor pop-up head irrigation, which isn't very friendly when it comes to Florida friendly landscaping and fruit trees. We want to put that water into the root zone. So we always use a drip or a micro irrigation. Um, so, you know, that's, that's just another thing, you know, so some of the plants are, have a little bit of a downward kind of look to them. As she said, it hasn't rained in the last two days. As you can see, it's coming now, so things are gonna look better in a few hours. We've got saw palmettos up here doing sunflower, lots of salvias, um, a lot of mealy grass, a lot of fakahatchee grass, pineapple guavas. Um, as far as going down that buffer of the property line, there's a combination of a dwarf and a full-size firebush. Um, and up by the front door, you're gonna notice a, a seating area um, and it's just brown, you know, there we ended up kind of skipping on the hardscapes on a few of the paths here Maybe that's something down the road that can be done But just to kind of save on the overall cost a lot of the math or a lot of the paths here in the front yard are just done in Mulch so when you guys look at that drone footage You're gonna see a lot of brown and just know when I come back for that follow-up in a few months You're not gonna see any of that brown everything's going to fill in um, You know the ground's gonna be shaded and densely covered so it's not gonna look like a sea of brown You're only gonna see the brown in the paths once we get to that point um, lots of, a couple of calyandras here. We've got a, um, a lot of the, uh, the gallardia kind of going up along this path, walking into the backyard. A couple of sweet almonds, calyandra. You guys know right when we walk in the front door, that's where we have to have that japota cava. So we've got some peanut mimosa in this bed. This actually just had stepping stones in it. So we've converted this into, um, you know, having a few plants here by the front door as you walk up. And this will be a seating area. And actually the whole idea here with this, um, the two cabbage bombs is to kind of have like a hammock spot. Um, you know, a spot in the front yard for the kids or just to come out here and relax. And it's surrounded by some dwarf natal plum, some calyandras. Um, over here on this side, we use that variegated Simpson stopper again. We've got some shell ginger up by the house. Um, a little Vitex here on the corner. And as we go into the backyard, we do have some grapevines over here on the side. Guys have already done some chop and drop on some things here. So we plant some bananas. You can see they put the grasses on them. Um, up against the house, we've got some different varieties of turmeric. Over here, we've got some canna lily. And let's see what's growing on in the backyard. So, oh, actually, I forgot the side yard. So I can already see a droopy um, loquat from over there. And those can get a little bit temperamental when they're first installed. Um, you can see it's got a little bit of a downward kind of fall to the leaf. It's not going to die. These are naturalized here in Florida. They really don't even need a lot of irrigation. It's only once it's first been installed. So got some native milkweed in here. Got some white society garlic. Some of those salvias and sages down towards the bottom. We did use a couple of these budleas here. I've got some white and purple ones on the bottom. Those have a really nice smelling flower and some more of that dune sunflower down at the bottom. And then same thing over here on this side. And I can't express to you enough about controlling the edge, coming from that standard landscape background, you know, doing cutting grass, edging, you know, it's all about the edge when it comes to cutting grass. Well, it's also all about the edge when it comes to an ecological landscape. You know, if we leave this edge for the neighbor's lawn guy to maintain, we all know what kind of job he's gonna do. So, you know, that's why we use this Sherlock edging, um, metal edging all the way down the property line. You can see he's already cut. And actually I can just tell by those small lines, homeowner probably cuts this himself so you know it doesn't get edged very often it doesn't get weed eated very often it's already grown over the sidewalk so that's a real reason you know to be controlling that you could see the grass is actually already coming up and starting to kind of lean over the metal you can almost not see the metal already and then out here by the road same thing you know we put a border to stop that grass from growing over it's all about controlling the edge you got a little sweet almond over here Another one of those chass or, chas or um, vitex trees, a lychee, firebush, the um, longevity spinach was already here. And we've got a buffer of Simpson stopper kind of walking our way down, um, working our way down that whole property line. Over here on this side, we've got some pink Turks cap hibiscus. This next bed had an existing trellis already sitting here. We added some native coral honeysuckle to it to kind of fill in. Um, and then the last bed over here on the right has the regular red Turks cap hibiscus. And, you know, that idea being if the kids garden in the backyard, they can come out and they can just eat those flowers anytime they want. Are right, you guys ready to see the fun stuff? The fun stuff up to the backyard. It's all about the kids, right? So back here, we've got a really cool kids play area, neat path system, really small rock for the kids to be able to walk on. Um, and everything back here is pretty kid friendly. We've got lots of dwarf mulberries. We've got some blue porter reed where they can eat the flowers on. Um, full size um, mulberry, lots of moringa. 
There's some lemongrass in this area. There's a jackfruit, there's a strawberry tree. There's another mulberry, there's an avocado over here on this side. Um, we've got the black Suriname cherry and there's a Barbados cherry in the back with the peach centered on that bed. So these trellises were here. And when we wrapped up, this trampoline wasn't here, but it's already found its forever home. Um, that is the edible leaf hibiscus. We got a couple of different varieties of that. There's a uh, Rosa Sharon. They've mismarked that. I just noticed that label said dwarf mulberry. Nope, that's a uh, Rosa Sharon. The guys probably got that mixed up. They do look quite similar. The peach, there's the um, Barbados cherry covered in flowers. Spiral ginger, passion fruits on the fence. And then this area in the back um, is kind of more of a shade tolerant area. Lots of galangal. There's a couple of star fruit in there. We've got some monstera up against the front of the wall. Um, got some shell gingers up along the back. Really for main fruit trees in this area though, the main one is gonna be the star fruit, um, turmeric up by the wall and uh, the monstera on the front side of the wall. And then we've got some pineapples. You can notice the katook over here along the fence. There's our second Jabbati Kaba, kind of filling in this space. And a couple of the farfugium or the tractor seat plants look a little bit dry. You can kind of tell. Oh, we got a dripper. Got a dripper. All right, she shut off. So, um, so this is a little path kind of walking back to this shade area. And I'll tell you, when I first came out and consulted and designed on this one, it was about six months ago. There was a lot more shade back here. The neighbor took a big oak tree out, so it kind of opened it up. Luckily, we still got this big camphor tree above my head, giving us a little bit of shade. Um, you guys can hear it booming and banging, so I am definitely tight on time today. Here's a fig. Whoa, it's coming. Uh, we've got some more pineapples, cranberry hibiscus all the way back here along the fence. There's another fig we relocated. It's already sprouting back out. Um, a couple of malanga in this area. And then of course, you know, we love using that sweet almond. There's another banana. That cranberry hibiscus was actually already existing. And this is to be the zone one veggie garden. So we put a valve in here and just a loop of some drip irrigation. And that can just be tied in some beds to feed, you know, the annual vegetables going into the fall veggie season. Um, up here by the house, we've got some of that native milkweed surrounded by um, galangal all the way along the front. And you can see this was in a little bit of a dappled light. It's kind of in a hot spot up here against the house. It can take full sun, but it's just shocked a little bit moving in. Um, and then the idea with this area was just to leave this blank for right now. They're eventually gonna have some construction here and another door, um, probably a set of double French doors or something kind of stepping out into the garden. So we've left this bed alone other than this epic variegated nopales. Um, really, really cool looking. Totally love that one. That's a new one we have available on the online store. Um, but yeah, so neat little project. You can see the Vitex still covered in flowers. Um, avocado doing really well. Strawberry tree already has flowers. Where are we at doing? Here we go. Um, jackfruit tree, another banana. Another banana, another banana, another banana. So I want to say that we probably put in six or seven different types of bananas here. Maybe two or three different types of mulberries. At least two different types of avocados. I think there's probably around 19 or 20 fruit trees here. As I say that, I noticed some blueberries and a pomegranate over here on this side that I missed. So a couple little blueberries here. Not something we plant a lot of, but when we requested, we do get them. Um, pomegranate pushing some really beautiful new red growth. And behind there, we've got some taro in the back with a couple more galango and here's the galango again up against the white fence taking a little bit of a sunburn um you know this is going to survive it's just kind of you know it's it's adapting to its new location so in dappled light at my place in full sun right here within a few weeks it'll push some new growth and get comfortable being here um this area i can tell you was kind of tough you know we came back on the second week and you know we sod cut this entire thing did all the proper pep prep possible like I said, the prep took us probably three times longer than expected here and still getting some nuts edge in these back beds. So that was a little bit of a battle. I need to probably hurry up and cut this short. I'm kind of like holding a lightning rod here. Um, got a couple more stops to make today. I got a busy day, but I just wanted to bring you guys this follow-up video. We actually did an epic COVID garden at the beginning of this whole um, pandemic. And, you know, it's only been in the ground like three and a half months. It was done with no design, just a budget. I went back to see it last week and I was blown away. I was like, I didn't film this for you guys. So I'm going to film that one, even though it's not from the beginning, just to show you what a four month old food forest can look like in Florida. It's really amazing with our, you know, humidity and our heat and our rains that we get down here and having a little irrigation and using the right amendments, how quickly things can grow. 
this stuff is coming. I gotta go. I hope you guys enjoyed this cool little project. I know we did. We have a blast doing every one of these. My guys did an awesome job like always. So Ryan, Ian, keep up the good work. Had a couple other guys, James and Cody help us with this one. You guys know who you are. Thank you very much. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, you guys know what we do around here? Pounder. Pounder.